And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to be able to tell you, hot off the press, I've got a scoop. They're going to begin calling me Scoop. Uh, HBO. HBO. Apparently has let it leak that uh, James Gandolfini will be replaced in the role of Tony Soprano by Pat Cooper. God, how did you find that out? How did you find that out? Uh -huh. I can't believe that. <laughs> what a terrible thing. To, I told you to back off. What's the matter with you? <laughs> I wanted to play the chin chiganti, but my chin was too small. <laughs> You know, why do you have to open your mouth? I mean, I've been on you for a lot of years. I gave you something in confidence. I'd make a great James Galdin Galdinfini. I'll take. I'll tell you right now. I'll take fifty thousand. I'm not a hog. Can you? What, what do you think about? The well, let me explain something to you. First of all, the man should take stock of his career. He's not a great movie, but you know, movie star. He's a fine gentleman, I'm sure. But when they offer him eight hundred thousand, he wants a million for two hundred thousand. You got to be out of your mind. Take the eight hundred thousand. Do uh, do ten, twelve shows. You wind up with seven, eight, nine million dollars. And if you don't work another day, God, you know, you're you're just set for the fee for life. And, you know, what, what, what's the reason? Now he's going to kill. A lot of people are going to lose their jobs. A lot of people may not work at all. And these guys who just got raised to 60000 an episode, they're not going to tell you. They're there with their tongue out because now he's in the seat saying, I don't know if I'm going to do it or if I'm not going to do it. I got news for you. If I'm on home box, I say goodbye to him. I would say goodbye to him. I said, that's a kick in the teeth. Because yeah. I think Dave Chase gave him a great, great opportunity. He's great on that show, no question about it. It's a great show. I love the show. But this man has just opened a can of worms. And I think what's going to happen eventually, this crap has got to stop. It really has to. People are out there, ain't got a job. People are losing their shirts. And a guy turns around for 200000 He wants to be the, uh, one of the highest paid actors. You know, Ray Romano, he's going to turn around. He wants a million three. Then the phrase, he gets a million eight. And this guy gets a million. I mean, well, you know, where does it stop? It's got to hit a wall sometime. It really does. And what happens is we people who turn around and we applaud them when they win the Academy Award, we applaud them when they, when they uh, win an Emmy, and they come out dressed and they got everything shown and they're all happy people. And then they turn around and do a stupid thing like this by hurting the people that are, they bite the hands that feeding them. Home Box is a great organization. Home Box will survive more than James Galdonfini. And James Galdonfini's got to understand. You know, and then he said the other day when they gave him an award on the Screen Actors Guild, he said, uh, and you young people never get discouraged. Never get discouraged, he said. Of course, it, it could happen. I'm saying, what does he mean by that? Here he makes a statement like that, and he's going to sue home box for more money. Now, that doesn't make sense. He's telling young people, you know, never get discouraged. So if you get successful, no, you know, if you, hey, I'm not the Bob Hope of the world. I never got big and that, you know, that, that strong. But I make a great living on my business, and I never nickel and dime anybody. I know what my strength is, and I know what my weakness is. And James Galdolfini should know his strengths and weaknesses. And right now, his strength is not where he's, where, where he's at. He may not get nothing. So what the hell is he proving? And if they sue him for 100 million, they could be in court for seven, eight years and cost him a ton of money. It's the same thing with the Wayne Newton situation. He sued NBC. He won $21 million. You know what he got now? Googoots. That's what he got. That's what he got. And it cost him $8 million out of his own pocket for lawyers. So he won the case and lost $8 million. Hooray! There's your answer. <laughs> the one and only Pat Cooper, if you just tuned in. Uh, some of you uh, may have flipped the dial or something. Or you just, uh, your radio fell off the gourmand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand this word anymore. I get, I, I, you know something? People get into, a, they get into a certain situation of, say, stardom or semi-stardom. I'm, I'm watching this, what's her name? Jeannie Garaf, Gar Garafola. This girl's got no standing in the community. This girl standing here talking about the war and she wants, we all want peace. We all don't, nobody wants to go to war. But this girl here is the worst comedian. She's not a great actor. But she's like, uh, she goes on Fox News and she's trying to make a statement that she doesn't know anything about. Because there's a clique out there, Bobby, that sticks together and says things that don't make sense. They don't understand the ins and outs of what's going on in Iraq. They don't have a clue. They must think this president is sleeping. I mean, give me a break. We're still the greatest country in the world. We've made mistakes. And again, nobody likes to have war. The Iraqi people don't want war. We don't want war here. But when you get a skivosa, this man's a skivosa. He's already bombed people. He's already gassed people. What does Martin Sheen want? 
Tell me, Martin, if you're listening, watch your son. Your son. That's who you got to watch out with. Those gavones that 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 uh, that you have for sons. Don't worry about your country. Your country will take care of itself. If you look at history about a great America that we have, we've made a lot of mistakes. We've overcome them. We'll go on making more mistakes. Greatest country in the world, Martin Sheen. Get on your knees and kiss the floor that you're making a salary. You're not the president in real life. You're the president on the West End or the West Side, whatever the hell you are. Zita, zita, zita. Make a novena, lay down and rehearse dying because that's where we're all going to go. <laughs> that's where we're all going to go. You understand, Martin? Back off. And you, Susan Sarandon, calm down. You had an Academy Award. You go in your bedroom, you see the nice statue you got, you got beautiful children, you got Tim Robbins, Tim Jones, whatever the poor guy's name is. And remember, let's talk about morality. What about people who get married and have children, Susan Sarandon? Is that moral? Oh, but you're moral about our country. We want peace. We want peace. And we're going to turn around. Why don't you put your body in front of the enemy, like all these other idiots that finally even Saddam says, get them out of here. They're in my way. All these brave people. Saddam Hussein chased them. said, get out of here because we don't know who's who's who anymore. And I got news for you. All you people, you Americans who want to stand in front of an Arab, remember, coming toward you is your own people. And I'm going to tell you a little secret that you don't know. The American army will go right over you. They'll go right over you. There's a lot of anger out there. A lot of anger. And I'm going to tell you something. We had a man called President Clinton. Remember this, they blew up our embassy, they blew up, uh, uh, up the ship, and here's a man, President Clinton, a Democrat, a Rhodes Scholar, can't find the streets. Think about it. Think about what they're going to know about this man. Okay, you Democrats, he's got a library. What are they, what, what they going to remember him for? Oral sex and lying. So there you are. That's the Democratic president. But now you're mad at this guy that we got now? God put this guy, as far as I'm concerned, where he belongs, because this guy's got courage. He may not be the brightest man in the world. He don't have to be, but he's focused. And he's focused after this man. And when he gets t- takes care of that, the North Koreans going to be next because we have to face these things because you got animals. And the head guy of the North Korea, ladies and gentlemen, while people are starving there, he's got his own pizza maker. You understand? This is what's important to him. His own pizza maker, this guy. That's what's important while his people are starving. What a joke. We got to whack these people out. Remember that. This is the only country that's got a heart. That's got a heart. Bob said earlier, the Mexican, now that guy, President Fox, now he's not too sure. Look, do me a favor. You know what it's all about? He may lose the election. He's worried about the election. He's not worried about the sanity of the world. He's worried that if he's going to become president again. He's a trillionaire. What the hell does he care if he's going to become president or not? Go on the farm. Ah, take care of your herd. Who gives a damn? Let somebody come become president that's got brains. That's got brains because if these people get a chance to take over this country, you'll see, you'll see, you, you, you know when you get 50 sharks, they'll eat this country up alive and spit you all out. Because Life magazine many years ago wrote an article, had Hitler conquered the world, you would all been in Germany today. And we were and guaranteed, and the Germans would have been here, and they would have treated you like garbage. But we gave them back their country. We gave France back their country. We gave everybody back their country, Japan. Now we got him in the U.N., which doesn't mean nothing. The U.N., what they should do is trot them the hell out and make apartments for low-rent people. Make apartments because these people are pain in the neck. You're wasting money. Who the hell cares about France, Germany? Mr. Bush, go get this guy. Screw them all. And look at Tony Blair. They're going to now eat Tony Blair up. What a joke. What a joke. God bless America. Kiss the floor, baby, that you're born in this country. Next time you go outside, kiss it again for me. You better be ashamed of yourself, you people who hurt this. Well, I'll take you to the veterans' hospital. I'll show you Vietnam veterans. I'll show you veterans from the Second World War. And they say, is this what it's all about? Sure, we made mistakes, of course. The Vietnam thing was, 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 was terrible. And you watch what's going to happen with, with, with the Koreans. It's going to be one Korea. Eventually, it's going to be one Korea. Remember, once you are Korean, you are Korean. Now it's out there. We got Southern Americans and Northern. We're all Americans. Give me a break. Give me a break. Don't, uh, don't knock your president, and don't abuse the First Amendment. A First Amendment should not be used when there's a war mode. We're in a war mode. So, uh, Osama Bin Laden, they claim he's trying to get a, an atomic bomb here. So you want to turn around and say, peace on earth? Oh, he'll give you peace, he'll tear you apart. Use your brains, you people out there. Love your country. And if you want to go against your country, go in a corner somewhere and say, yeah, I don't like what they're doing. But don't make the soldiers over there feel terrible that the people back there, their own paisanos, want to eat them up alive. Give me a break. I don't think I have to tell you that's Pat Cooper, folks. And uh, <laughs> uh, 
You see, he really would make a good Tony Soprano. No, yeah, I suppose he would. He'd, anything he wants to do. By the way, Pat will be appearing Saturday, April 19th at the John Harms Theater in Englewood, New Jersey. Uh, Saturday, May 17th, the Patriots Theater at the War Memorial in Trenton, New Jersey. With Uncle Floyd. Wow, Uncle Floyd. Uncle Floyd did a program with me over at the Rio Diner. He's a wonderful man. Yeah, he's he's a good guy. Nobody says oofa the way he does. Well, you know, hey, that's okay. He's just a nice man, period. He certainly is. Uh, we're going to give uh, <clears throat> two tickets to yeah. uh, John Harms Theater. Right. And uh, we will... Uh, we will give the two tickets to the first caller to ask a question that Pat feels is the most important question you could ask on today's show. All right? He's a judge of one. He doesn't have to consult with anybody. It's not like uh, trying to rebuild the World Trade Center. The, everybody has to have their own uh, ideas, and we want to be uh, you know, politically correct. He is going to tell you who gets the two tickets, not me. Even though this is the Bob Grant program, at least it was. Straight ahead. <laughs> if you just joined us, is visiting. Uh, a little while ago, you mentioned Martin Sheen. Uh, he's been doing a commercial which uh, pays well to the Sheen family because his son Charlie is in the commercial. I thought he lost it. The be they lo that's right. Yeah. That's right. He deserved to lose it. Yeah, I mean, you know, the American people are, as you said, we have the biggest heart in the world. Yeah. We're the only nation really with a heart. Anytime there's an earthquake or anything, there we are. But you know what? They're not stupid. In the long run, they say, why should we continue to support people that are against our country? Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with them. Okay. Uh, people uh, are calling uh, Mr. Uh, Lindley. Believe it or not, that guy's name is Lindley Smith. I, I know it sounds fake. Nobody's named Smith anymore, but that's his name, this guy in the control room. Really? Yeah. And he says, people are calling. They want to know, where is Pat appearing? All right. Um, <clears throat> I'll tell you, Mrs. Cooper. I mean, I'll tell you. Saturday, April 19th, the John Harms Theater in Englewood, New Jersey. Saturday, May 17th, the Patriots Theater at the War Memorial in Trenton, New Jersey. And uh, we're going to be giving away two tickets to uh, John Harms Theater. And uh, all you have to do is uh, let us know where to send them. We'll find out. Let's take a call, Pat, okay? Suzanne from New York. Go ahead, Suzanne. Uh, yes, great to talk to Pat Cooper. We miss you. Thank uh, you. Your old Doral days in Manhattan, New York City. Oh, God love us. <laughs> I loved it out there. Oh, um, yes. With the Momandos. Exactly. Wonderful uh, people. Oh, yes, absolutely. Mr. Cooper, you know, um, you're brilliant. You really don't know how much influence you say it like it is, but and it's truth, and you use logic and common sense. Like you said, the... Uh, UN, uh, we agree. I agree. I feel the UN should be in Libya. They're, they're anti-American, and Bush has got to have more moxie and get going with this. Because look at how our military men and women feel sitting there, 200,000 troops. When are we going to go? When are we not going to go? We're going to give them more time? We were in the first Gulf War. This man's loaded with chemicals of uh, uh, biological, etc. We don't have to know, uh, speak about that. And um, like I said, we're in the war mode. The uh, Hollywood left, anti-war, uh, like you said, not now. We're in a war mode. We have to back this president and get going. We have wow. no choice. If we had a choice, I would say, fine. There's no choice. You got a man here who's saying, hey, this has got to be done. And we can't now be listening to people at the U.N. We'll be ice skating on water for the rest of our life. He's got to go in there and get this guy out. Or this guy's got to turn around. If he's smart, he would quit and get out of there if he's smart. Because they're talking already with the generals of the Iraqi army, you know, figuring that if they try that, that, that the MOA bomb, these guys will give up in two seconds. Trust me. This is the strongest country in the world. We don't have to ice skate on water. We can tell them, yeah, you bullies are not going to bully this country. we got more important things to do in America than to waste our time with your nonsense. If you're going to get gas, we're going to whack you right out. And if you think we're going to help you with your country again, goodbye. It's over. All right, uh, let's say hello to uh, Rich in New Jersey. Go ahead, Rich. You're on WOR. Yes, Bob. Good afternoon. Pat, you're a legend, man. Thank I you. love you. You really should think about running for politics. Oh, God, give me a break. No, I'll tell you something. I'm serious. You know, 
Uh, what most of these politicians, most of them, don't use is common sense. Everything you've said is common sense, and you say it as it is and the way it should be. And, God, I, I'd, I'd love to see you. Oh, man, what I'd love to see All you. All right, Rich, we thank you very much. Richie, thank you. Thank you. Joe in Brooklyn. Go ahead, Joe. Joey. Yes, Pat. a boy. I love you, Pat. You're great. You should be the president. No, give me a break. Pat, let me ask you a tough question, Go which, ahead. which you can't get anybody to answer, and I think you're the only one that loves this country enough to give a straight answer. Now, if you remember, Harry Truman, a Democrat, right. made a tough decision, which everybody second guesses now, about dropping the bar. No, everybody doesn't second guess. Well, Peter right. Jennings is not everybody. All right, now, here's the question, Pat. We had a Democrat president named Roosevelt. One of the best. Okay. Now, he made a decision to intern Japanese, Germans, and Italians during World War II. Right. Now, I agree with you, Pat. People, I can't understand why people are saying that we're afraid that we're going to be attacked in this country, like you said, maybe with an atomic bomb delivered by Osama bin Laden, and we don't have the guts to do what we should be doing now, exactly what Roosevelt did. I'd like to ask your opinion. Do you think we should be interning Arab-American Muslims in this country now, Pat? No. 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 Why not? I don't think that's the right thing to do. That's not going to solve a problem. The problem is right now, in my opinion, is Mr. Bush is going to say Sunday is the, se is, is, is the 17th of March. Yeah, it's over, and that's it. Yeah, because we start putting people away in, in, in camps here. Now it gets out of control. We've got to let the people know that this country is not going to put nobody in camps. We're going to do what we got to do. And we're then if they start to play games in this country, we got enough people to take care of it. You don't want to put, you know, hey, listen, the Japanese, the only thing that hurts me is the Japanese, you know, years ago, hey, you got to make enemies. There's got to be hate coming out of those things with the camps. I tell you, the Italians were giving up just to come to California. They came over here. They were in a hurry to come to California, the Italians. You know, listen to me. When Hitler asked Mussolini for shells, he sent a macaroni. You see, that's the whole story here. That's why, that's why the Italians would give up and come to California, and uh, they were living great. They were living great. But right now, I don't think we should get anybody and put them on a camp. I don't think so. That's not right. You know what's going to cost you billions of dollars to put these guys in camp? You're going to make enemies within. What we got to do is try to get the Muslim people here to understand us and help us and, and, and get rid of these tyrants. That's what we got to do. Teach those people of that culture that these tyrants got to get out of town. That's what we got to do. We can't be bullied anymore. All right. Thanks, Joey. Uh, Pat, uh, someone says yeah, that you said Monday... That, uh, Sunday was the 17th. Uh, Monday's the 17th. I apologize. All right. He apologizes, folks. Yeah. See? You know, if you want to find out if you've got people listening, just say something that isn't quite correct, and you you learn that you've got people listening. Well, there you go. Okay. I live and learn. So uh, I should make a lot of mistakes. I'll be getting calls every two seconds. <laughs> uh, Pat Cooper, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue with Pat. It's... Uh, a great event uh, for me to uh, have Pat in our studio. I haven't seen him in a long time. We did talk on the phone a couple of weeks ago. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, Brian from New Jersey, you're on WOR. Go ahead, Brian. Hey, and here's a real smack in the face. The U.N. our buddies put Iraq to head a committee on disarmament. Get that. I know, it's stupid, makes no sense. And Libya is the head of a committee on uh, terrorism. Right. Yeah. What are they going to do, spend inspectors over here by us and make us rid ourselves of weapons of mass destruction? Guess what, Brian? You are going to win the two tickets because that was a great observation. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, what, you, what you do, Brian, is uh, give uh, Lindley mm -hmm. uh, your uh, name and address so that we'll know where to send the two tickets to Pat's show which will be at the John Harms Theater in Englewood, New Jersey, on April 19th, okay? Sounds good. I can't wait. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Come backstage. Okay. Please. All right, Lindley, uh, you, you get the gentleman, uh, Brian, you, uh, you'll get his, uh, his address. Okay. 1-800-321-8828 is our telephone number. 1-800-321-8828. Gary and Bensonhurst, go right ahead. Gary. Uh, Pat, I remember when you had your talking shoes holding court on 86th Street. I, re I remember the cover of the uh, album, Pat, you and the... All right, this guy is putting on an act. This guy is putting on an act. He wants to plug some uh, wannabe. Some never was. You know, there has been and never was. He wants to plug somebody. And I could tell right away. He was, You're putting on the fake thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? There's some people 
very unhappy. That I really would love to get a hold of. <laughs> I really would love to get a hold of. What are they going to do? Yeah. They got nothing else to do. You know, too bad a certain Bonanima uh, family chief is gone because if he were still around. He... <laughs> hey, Joey, this is. Anyway, I shouldn't talk that way. All right, who do we have here? Uh, Brian? Are you there, Brian? Brian no, Brian. Oh, Brian was the guy who won. That's right. Uh, do we have Gary now? Is Gary on the line? Gary was that idiot. Oh, okay. All right, we're not, we're out there going to talk to them. Uh, Pat, we were talking a little while ago about the, uh, people who've gotten involved. You mentioned this Garofolo. I, I don't even know what she does. If she walked in here, I wouldn't even know who it is. That's, that's how famous she is. Well, that's what bothers me. It's a girl that's not really hit the home run yet as is becoming a star. And she's getting involved with something that she really don't understand. Because when she was on Fox News a couple of days ago, she came off very bad. And then I can't believe that Bill O'Reilly put her on and turned me down. That's an insult. What? They who? turned me down and got Jeannie Garofalo. And Bill, if you're listening to me, I can't believe you, pal. I got more to say than that girl will ever say. And well, remember that. He, he wanted to have people... Well, I don't know if he wanted... Personally, I, I, I was uh, called up to see if I can get on the show, because I like the show, and I like your show. And uh, they said, well, no, not right now, but they put Jeannie Garofalo, who's a bore, who has nothing to say, who doesn't get involved, and, uh, and uh, this man puts her on. I can't understand Bill O'Reilly sometimes. As brilliant as he's supposed to be, that's as dumb as he's supposed to be. I don't understand you, Bill. Pay attention. Put the people on. They got things to say. They're not afraid to jump into the water. That bothers me. That bothers me. Well, if you if you want him to talk about you, all you have to do is attack him, and he'll talk about well, you. Well, I don't have to attack him. You know, hey, I did, there are a lot of things I like what he says, a lot of things he don't, but that's okay. But don't turn me down for Jeannie Garofalo. Turn me down for someone that's got something to say that's more important. Don't waste the year on that woman on the air. She's a pain in the neck, and she's a bore. A bore. You know, I don't go on the Letterman's no more. I don't go on the... You know why? They, they, I get this. You intimidate. I intimidate what? What do I intimidate? David Letterman, you know, I did a show three times. That was the end of me. I intimidate. You intimidate? Conan O'Brien, I intimidate. Uh, Jay Leno don't want no part of me. I intimidate. And the reason I said I'm not going to go on this show, that's over. God, hey, I had a great career. I'm still going great. But you know, who are these people? Who are these people to turn around and say, well, he's not. See, I'm not in the clique. I don't belong in the clique. See, there's a clique of people. There's a Rosie O'Donnell, another Sfatim. You know what a Sfatim is? Rosie O'Donnell. There's a girl there. I mean, she could trip oh, oh, on her head. And they'll all, and, and, and she'll never get hurt. Never get hurt. They can be, they, they can say, well, you know, I'm, not, I'm a lesbian now, I'm going to have a love child. And I'm saying, well, Rosie, if you can have a love child, why don't you take the sperm? Why should somebody else take the sperm? But she's going to have a love child. And the American people sit there and go, oh, isn't that wonderful? How can you have a love child with somebody else's sperm that you ain't got in your body or your girlfriend's body? I don't understand that. Would somebody explain that to me, a love child? We got Ellen DeGeneres, and a funny girl, everything's nice, but now, she, you know, she fell on the rear end twice. She, she come off terrible, in my opinion. She's not a center square of Hollywood squares, the center square. I said, is that, is that America? Where is she? She's in the center square. Now she's going to get her own talk show, all right? Robert Downey Jr., he puts things in his arms and his nose and his head, and he keeps getting movies. I turn around and dip the bread in the sauce, I'm a looney tune. I don't understand it. I don't understand society. I don't understand my business. I don't understand my business. But you know what it is? I'm not in the clique. I'm not in the clique. And when you're not in the clique, they push you aside because they're afraid of you that you're liable to say something that makes sense. They don't want to hear sense. I've been called the time bomb. I've been called, I've been called a guy that said that has a nervous breakdown. I said, no, I got things to say. And I learn off, off my mistakes. And we got people out there that don't belong, in my opinion, on television. They don't belong. Now you got the American Idol. You got this other idiot from England coming over here insulting these kids. Why put these kids out in the first place? This Fatim that he is. Who is he? Somebody's going to break his head one day. He's an arrogant piece of garbage. And we put him on our television. We got American people here who need a job for crying out loud. Why you get this idiot? He's an idiot. The man is an idiot because he's abusive to people that don't have brains enough to get off the television. You don't belong on there. What the hell are you doing on television, you know, singing with your finger in your nose? Get off. And why does the networks allow that, seeing these young kids being abused like this? That's abuse. That's abuse. You people should turn around and shut the damn shit off on these people. Don't buy the products from the people that support these kind of shows, the American Idol. All of a sudden, these guys in six minutes are going to become big stars. Big stars in six minutes. I'm in this business over 40 years. I'm still a semi-name. You got to earn the right. You got to earn their right. These people ain't earned their right. It's a hype job. A lot of hype jobs here. That's what it's all about. 
What is this American Idol? What is that? What it's, is uh, they got these people, come on, they all want to be, who's going to be the best singer, the best dancer, whatever what the hell that is. And these three, uh, uh, Paula Abdul, this guy, uh, what I can't even think of his name, this uh -huh. arrogant man, and he turns around and they uh, they judge you. And he's been insulting to a lot of these young, young, young kids. He goes, you're terrible, you're abusive, how dare you get out there? Why did you put him out in the first place? Why is this man on that stage, this young kid, who can't, it's embarrassing. If you watch it, it's terrible. You're seeing young people make a fool of themselves, of themselves and what happens, the network is making a fooling themselves to allow that well hey, look, look we have low standards look jerry springer okay i mean, I mean you know need i say more he got insulted that they weren't going to make him the senator you know he was going to run for senate and they took a poll i think one person said ah, I'm, 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 that's about you know but that's america that's Let, america larry flint would be the only guy to vote for him in ohio probably yeah probably but hey this is what people want they uh, you see some of these uh, boxing matches now it's no longer the art of self-defense they're hitting each other with chairs I mean, you see somebody say, on pay-per-view, these guys are knuckle, knuckling each other, kicking each other in the groin, and biting and kicking and thing, and we're going, hooray, they're eating popcorn. They're eating popcorn. This is going back to Caesar's days. This is the Lions and the Catholics all over again. And I'm not a prude. I like to see a good boxing match with jo Roy Jones boxing and doing. I, I, I like the art of self-defense, but they start picking up chairs and biting each other. And the kids, the kids are going crazy. They love all this. I'm saying, uh, look, that's the future. I couldn't carry a wooden pistol. My father would have killed me. You get no toys, gun toys. He says, you know what you're going to get? A zucchini. You put the zucchini in your pocket and shut up. That's your gun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> straight ahead, straight ahead, everybody. All right, we've got uh, Roger from Long Island for Pat Cooper. Go ahead, Roger. Hello. Hello, Roger. Is Roger there? Mm, Roger's not there. Let's try Tom in New Jersey. Go ahead, Tom. Hello, Pat. Yes, Tom. Mr. Cooper, nice to talk to you. I've been a great fan for many years. I remember your great album uh, back in the early 60s with the Italian wedding. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Grandma had a bun over here, right. a bun over there. Right. Sandwiches went bit the bing, bit the bang. Right. <laughs> and remember this. I was the one that created Bada Bing, Bada Bang. And a guy called James Kahn who went on television and uh, said that he invented that in The Godfather. So I watched The Godfather again. What he didn't, he didn't say Bada Bing, Bada Bang. He said... Bada beep, bada bop. That is a difference, see? I was going bada bing, bada bang for years. You did start. Now, all of a sudden, everybody's saying bada bang, bada bang. You go on to Sopranos, they got a club called the bada bang, bada bang. <laughs> Not that they owe me anything, but, you know, give me the credit for crying out loud. <laughs> James Conn said he said. He don't remember what he says, James Conn. He don't remember yesterday, James Conn. Is he straightened out, James Conn? I hope so. I don't, I don't, I don't follow his career. I got my own, I got my own problems. What about James Conn? He's worried about He said if he would have signed the paper and owned the words bada bing, bada bang, he would have been a millionaire. Really? You can't. You can't own words. Well, there's a guy called uh, Michael Buffer. Oh, you mean the guy Let's with Let's Rumble? To... Yeah, he owns yeah. those. He's yeah. got that. I should have done that, too, because I'll tell you something, Pat. There are a lot of guys who are so-called talk show hosts. Right. They have stolen a lot of my stuff. Oh, we know that. Well, how do you learn? How do you learn? How does a newcomer learn? He learns from people like you. Absolutely. And I'm not flattering you. That's a fact. He learned some of the people for years ago. I mean, the true, true radio people who are in the trenches and they get the kind of money they're getting today. <laughs> I mean, they get millions and millions of dollars today. You have you, whatever you're getting, you earned every right to get what you're getting. And you're fired. Well, I, I, Pat, you know, the Bible says uh, there are two things we definitely have no control over, when we're born right. and when we die. Absolutely. And uh, don't you wish you'd been born a little, a uh, couple of years no. later? No, no, no. no. I, don't, I, don't want, I, I don't want to go through that nonsense. Whatever I did, it's okay. I just, uh, you know, I told you, I rehearse dying every Thursday. I tell the wife, you like me this way or you like me that way. It's, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's reality. I don't want to be anybody. I don't want to be yesterday. I'm living the way it is today. I got no time for I wish it was yesterday and I wish it was tomorrow. I'm satisfied just to be here and hope to God that I'll you know, have a dinner and lay down. Hello, Pat. Yes, sir. No, Pat, I just wanted uh, to add to your Italian mm. wedding jokes. Yes. I don't know if you like, and don't take it wrong. I'm Italian and most. I don't take anything wrong. Oh, okay. How do you break up an Italian wedding? How? Yell out concrete. Oi, brother. <laughs> bada boom, boom. <laughs> bada bang, bada bing, bada boom. Goodbye. Right, let's say hello to Joe in New Jersey. Joe. Hello, Joe. How are you, Pat? How are you? All right, my friend. You know what really teased me off? People yeah. have such short memories. 
They forgot about the towers. Nobody talks oh, about it. Oh, absolutely. Don't you know Nobody that? Nobody talks about it. Nobody shows No, 9-11 it. is gone. Uh, it's going to cost me a case of beer. <laughs> I, when, when towers got hit, my neighbor said to me, they're going to be talking this to guests. I said, to death. I says, Bill, this is Pearl Harbor. People will not forget it. And, and, and when Bush made the decision, you know, to uh, denounce the uh, terrorists and the countries and everything else, he brought over the case of beer. Now we're talking to God. We're going to have to go bring the case of beer back to him. There you go. But you're right. They forgot 9-11. They all these baldies do-gooders don't seem to understand. Nobody talks about it. You know, it, 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 it POs me so damn much. You see, the important thing is now we have to get you know, we, 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 we don't want to get up and, uh, and turn the television off and on by ourselves. We need clickers. And we uh, don't want Sedan to come here and take away our clicker. That's we've what got, it's all about. We've got to cut off their money. We've got to cut off their supplies. And any country that, that's helping them with the money or the supplies, we've got to go after. We're going to get hit, hit here again. There's no question. Well, that, that's what they're waiting for. Then the Jeannie Garaflos and the Susan Sarandans and all these guys and people, all these do-gooders are going to turn around and say, well, peace on earth, uh, they uh, made a mistake. Boy. You know, there's still uh, people who love Hitler. I give you that. There's still anti-Semitics. There's still a lot of people out there who got hate in their heart. So, uh, you know, well, you can't stop that. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate thank you, Joe. Uh, Paul, on the car phone. Go ahead, Paul. Hey, good evening, Bob and Pat. Paul, be careful driving with that car phone. They'll nail you. No, well, I, actually, I'm, I, I made it home, so thank good, you very much good. for your concern. Just be careful. Uh, I, I agree with your assessment of talk show hosts. There's really so little entertainment on TV or radio anymore. The only two places I get my entertainment are from Bob Grant and Howard Stern. And I was wondering when you're going to be back on Howard's show. I, I don't I, know. I, I uh, You know, the reason I didn't do his show anymore is because he put a gag order on, a, on, a, on two guys called Opie and Anthony. And they were two pussycats that didn't stand up to him. And I said, well, if this man could turn around and put gag orders on people, I would rather not do his show no more. And it's as simple as that. I mean, nobody can gag him. He can say whatever he wants to. But yet he turns around and says to these two guys, you can't mention me. You can't talk about me. And I'm saying that this is not right and i don't want to be around that if this man thinks he has that kind of power i want to talk about whatever i want to talk about so he turns around and everybody steals his material i mean that, that's so unfair he's done everything he wrote he wrote the word the you know give me a break already he's in, you know he's getting into his 50s he's got to understand that other new people are coming along don't accuse everybody of stealing off you i mean come on give me a break there's yeah, a lot of young kids out there they know that they got to make a living too Opie and Anthony weren't even, didn't even qualify. They don't even make the... Well, they were the, stupid. First of all, they got a $30 million contract with no talent. So each one gets $15 million a piece. Then they turn around and tell a couple to go and have sex in that St. Patrick Cathedral. And these two idiots who go to St. Patrick Cathedral have sex there listening to these other idiots. So, so it's the blind leading the blind. Give me a break already. So then so Howard Stern got, Howard Stern wind up the winner because they threw them off the air and the 15 million each, they got go goots. That's oh, what they got. Howard didn't throw anybody off the air. They no, no, I didn't say Howard threw them off, about. you know, by, by, by Howard turning around and, 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 and fighting with this guy, Howard really is the winner of, of, of uh, the argument. He's the winner because he turned around and got rid of these two guys. You're intimidated by Howard Stern. Me never. I'm not intimidated no, by no, nobody. Nobody uh, intimidates Pat. That's not fair uh, because I, I was his best guest and if he's listening now, he knows it. I contributed to that show, and he could, and, and he did be a lot of good also. What's fair is fair. All right, Paul. Thank uh, you, Paul. Great question. Thank you very much. Nice. But nobody intimidates Pat. It's the other way around. Look at all these guys that won't have him on because he intimidates them. Straight ahead. Let's see. I think we have time for at least one more call. Joe, go right ahead, Joe. Thing, Bob and Pat. Uh, Pat, first of all, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Uh, do you remember a club, a supper club? in a suburb of Pittsburgh called Monroeville, PA, called the Holiday House. I never remember it. It was one of the finest clubs around. We, we, Pittsburgh was always a great town around Monroeville. I used to work three or four clubs there a year. There were That's quite a few places. Well, they had the Horizon Room they had in the airport. They had right. the Monroe. Then they had the Twin Coaches. Right. It was a great area, great. But there's no more. That kind of show business is I over, know. unfortunately. I I know. Well, you did something very special for my father. My father, Marvin, was the manager of the Holiday House. Oh, I know Marvin. Oh, my God. You're kidding me. Yeah, and uh, it was the day of my brother's wedding. And I remember you were with your wife, and you were appearing there. And uh, my dad said, would you mind, you know, just 
doing a minute or two, and you know, you did 20, 25 minutes. It was unbelievable. God, and it was that, something that my, my family still talks about to this day. Well, thank you. How nice of a man, and my father always spoke, <laughs> speaks very highly of you. And is I he just, still around, your dad? You. I'm sorry? Is he still around? Yes, he is. Send my love to him, please. He I, was I a, cla what, what a classy man. What thank a gentleman. Thanks, uh, thanks so much, Pat. Take care and be well. Have a good year. All right, Joe. Isn't that uh, nice and that remarkable? God, having well, he said Marvin at Pittsburgh. Boy, the, the, the lights went on. What a what a nice uh, what a nice man he is. How long ago did you play there? God, you, the place has been closed off, off, over ten years ago. I still worked that thing on average twice a year. They've had some big names there, you know. It was wonderful. But that show business, there's no place to work no more. It's over. It's over. Uh, you know, but I accept that. I understand. It's a new business. That's it. Well, Pat, you're looking great. Thank you. And I know you lead a clean life. And uh, you're enjoying yourself. I That's am. the important yes. thing. Yep. You don't get agita, you give agita. Well, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Papa. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that slams the lid on things for today. Until tomorrow, this is Bob Grant reminding you somebody's got to say these things. I'm glad it's me. Straight ahead for Tommy Marr.